countless officers line the halls of this hallway after carrying him in and grieve for their brother. We're mourning and we're angry. It is our city against the killers. This was an attack on the city of New York. And we're angry because we've been here before. We're angry because we saw it coming. We're angry because we said it was going to happen and it happened again. New York mourns the loss of an officer shot and killed in the line of duty Friday night. Officer Jason Rivera and his partner Wilbert Mora came under fire while responding to a domestic violence call in Harlem. Rivera, just 22 years old, was killed. Mora is fighting for his life in the hospital tonight. Police were not just under attack in the Big Apple. A Harris County deputy, Corporal Charles Galloway, was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Houston, Texas, yesterday morning. Joining me now for more on this violent wave, retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey and also retired homicide detective in New York. That's Bill Cannon. Um, Bill, let's let's start with you because you're in the city there and something that stood out to me. We just heard Patrick Lynch there a second ago. This this shooting seemed different to me. I, I mean, the response to it, you have a new mayor and a new commissioner and they were furious and fired up. Yes, you know, a lot of the people, though, that are talking tough now are with some of the same people that were talking defund the police six months ago. This is a horrendous situation. And uh, these two officers did everything right, except they weren't given the correct information uh, by the complainant, who should have told them that her son had been known to carry guns before. And had they known that, they maybe have either called for backup or approached this a little differently. And I'm not saying they did anything wrong, but the complainant in this incident didn't uh, specify that her son was known to carry a gun, and he was a, uh, he was a criminal. Sergeant, you and I have talked about this before, but uh, after traffic stops, which killed the, 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 uh, the Harris County Sheriff's officer, the next thing that is probably the diciest and the most challenging and, per and perhaps unpredictable are these domestic violence cases as well. Absolutely, and I think I it's think very important. Domestic... Oh, I'm sorry, Cheryl, that was for you. Yeah, no worries. Absolutely, and it's very important, I think, that uh, police agencies beef up the training that officers are receiving when they respond to these kinds of calls. We play like we practice, and those calls are very dangerous. I think certainly uh, the communications dispatchers need to do a better job in trying to get information from callers with regards to is the person armed? Have they been known to have a proclivity towards violence? Have they been uttering anti-police uh, sentiment, as we know was the case in the New York uh, police officer right. shooting? And so there are many things that we can all do collectively to try to ensure that our officers are safe when they respond to these types of calls. Let's listen to what the president said about police funding. Bill, to your point, and what we're asking of our police departments. Here's some of what he said. We shouldn't be cutting funding for police departments. I propose increasing funding. Look, you know, we ask cops to do everything, including be psychologists and social workers. Guess what? They need psychologists and social workers. Uh, Detective, it seems like the, the pendulum is swinging back now, to your point, this whole idea of police reform, which a lot of people want, seems to be in flux. People also want to feel safe. You know, everyone uh, is for police reform and for criminal justice reform. However, there has to be some common sense. And in New York City, they've had this bail reform thing that is just outrageous. And they've actually bailed people who have been arrested multiple times for carrying a firearm. There was one individual who was uh, bailed five times. That's outrageous. That's, that's, not even, that's so not smart. And also, the politicians in New York have been known to be anti-police. The city council instituted this thing called the diaphragm law last year, which was totally outrageous. And they did that without consulting anyone in law enforcement to, in regards to did this make any sense? And it made no sense at all. Thank God a judge reversed it. Sergeant, I, I couldn't help but, but see this and hear this over the weekend and wonder what police can do about it. Are we asking too much of the police? In other words, what are they supposed to do about this? A lot of this is inherent to police work, and we just have to be mindful, and training is, a, is an important part of that. Complacency kills. We respond to these types of calls over and over, day in and day out. And so it's imperative that officers understand 
that these are the types of situations that can get you hurt and have a plan A and a plan B just in case things go sideways. I think it's always better to have more officers on scene and I wouldn't be opposed to any of my officers asking for backup when ordinarily they wouldn't. Uh, Detective, let's, you mentioned this about some of the reactions from the past, and this is also getting a lot of play in New York as well. There was a councilman there saying just two weeks ago, NYPD is still the biggest gang in New York City. And then after the shooting saying, I stand with the families of the fallen. Um, I don't know, Bill, but this, this rookie who was killed joined to make a difference. And th this is the kind of recruit you, you want to see and, and even clone. Look, these, these young cops were heroes in every sense of the word. Uh, they, you know, this could happen to veteran cops also. And, you know, I, I, the sergeant, uh, from uh, I echo her sentiments. Training is a great thing, and cops love to go to training. However, when politicians talk about training, they really don't mean it because it costs a lot of money to train cops and to send them to training. Because when you send cops to training, they're off the road. They're not on patrol. So it costs a lot of money. So they, they say that when something goes wrong, but they really don't mean it. Uh, and I know that from 27 years on the NYPD. They talk a lot, they talk, talk a good story, but when it comes down to it, they really don't mean it. Sergeant, where do we start with this? Uh, I mean, there were several cities that set homicide records. Um, I, I just couldn't help but wonder about how we revered uh, first responders not too long ago, uh, called them our finest. Do you think that's still the case? Well, in certain segments, I think, of society, there, there's certainly an anti-police sentiment, and so uh, we can't pretend that that ex doesn't exist. I think, um, you know, community-based policing was something that worked very well here on the Los Angeles Police Department. I think you need to build the, the, the bridge that's between, uh, the gap that's between community police. Uh, I think officers need to have a sense of, I know you, you know me, I trust you, and you can trust me when they respond to these radio calls because many departments don't have the benefit of back out at backup and you need mm -hmm. to know that the community is supporting you in your endeavors to provide quality of life issues and keep them safe. Well, we know that uh, departments across the country are, are struggling right now with retirements and resignations. Some cities are down hundreds of officers. They're struggling to recruit and we know they have a difficult job. And Detective, we know your city's hurting after what happened there over the weekend. We appreciate you both coming on. It's always good to see retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey and retired NYPD homicide detective Bill Cannon. Thanks for your time, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Shifting gears.